This is a book review of Alibaba. We are accessory to success. We review a lot of business books here. It's websites for writers, business enthusiasts, entrepreneurs. Thanks for listening. There's a lot of other book recommendations in this review. Uh, if it sounds interesting, make sure to head to the website to find links to all of those. We also have a newsletter we send out once a week with lots of great business books, things you might enjoy if you're listening to this review. So stay tuned, enjoy, and let's move on to the main takeaway. Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built, visits the near two-decade rise of Jack Ma, the ultimate entrepreneur. He founded Alibaba, arguably the most powerful e-commerce marketplace on the globe. The company's strategy has been called the Iron Triangle, a now closely studied approach to marketing entailing finance, logistics, and e-commerce. Another success story in similar topics would be I Love Capitalism. Author Duncan Clark doesn't just tell Ma's story. He looks at challenges of trying to grow in a society that suppresses it. It touches on competitors like Tencent, and its core, Clark's book unveils how Ma's triumph transformed a society that frowns on independence. Here's some bullet point takeaways of what you'll learn in this book. Future and aspiring entrepreneurs will learn from Ma's tenaciousness and unique qualities essential to success. Read about how the then struggling Ma started a small e-commerce store and 15 years later turned it into the biggest IPO on Wall Street. As much as political statements as business story, see how Alibaba dynamically altered the East through before and after conditions directly involving Ma's work. Now on to the main summary. While Amazon and eBay get the press, Alibaba is measurably the world's biggest and most successful online commerce company. Between its three primary sites, Alibaba hosts millions of businesses and merchants. It manages hundreds of millions of users and handles a great flow of business than any other e-commerce company in the world. Take that, Amazon. Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built, examines not just the media monster, but the company's impact on Chinese culture and on the West's mostly under-acknowledged impact on the internet revolution. Overall, this country has giddily taken credit for the internet and PC evolution. Not surprising when we tend to view the giants of tech, Apple, eBay, Microsoft, and yes, Amazon, the biggest influencers are primarily American. Duncan Clark's book about the extraordinary rise of Alibaba changes that thinking. It doesn't simply tell the story of an unassuming man crediting one of the most powerful e-commerce businesses. It shows how this Herculean feat was accomplished in a country that discouraged such feats and how Alibaba shifted a political mindset. Curiously, even today, the Chinese government strives to control its citizens' access to uncontrolled speech, the internet's fueled asset. Though the government certainly wasn't too concerned with the internet in the 1990s, it's fascinating to hear that Ma, a tech geek born in the East in 1964, hadn't accessed the internet until 1994 while visiting the states. Admittedly, the internet was still a fledgling commodity at the time. Less than 25% of American homes had a computer, compared with nearly 80% in 2010. At the time, Ma had already created, quote, Hope, his own translation agency. Its mission was to help local companies in the East find overseas business. The five-member staff was a, in a financial stronghold, seeing the internet as the answer, Ma convinced an American friend to code a website for Hope. This website would be the seed that grows into Alibaba, a site offering Chinese vendors and business connections to export buyers and channels. This revolutionary thinking reminds us of Benjamin Franklin in his biography book, An American Life by Walter Isaacson. Ma went home and used the code to launch China Pages, one of the first registered internet businesses in China. This venture leads into insights concerning the East's government's determination to control all forms of media, a battle that has made recent worldwide headlines. China Pages had some difficulty acquiring funding and customers as most of its prospects had no idea what online or internet meant. Ma, in fact, was accused of conducting a scam. The obstinate stance taken by Chinese business isn't too surprising not simply because they were governed by a political body that essentially controlled private business as well as public access to information. The internet may have embedded itself in mainstream America, but Chinese business remained weary of it. Ma attempted the impossible. In a country where the majority had no internet, in many respects had no idea what the internet was, he dared to launch a startup 
which offered web services that no one could verify existed. And he wanted thousands of dollars from potential customers to do it. Ma eventually turned his modest venture, an e-commerce company, into a global giant. It in turn ventured into entertainment, logistics, cloud computing, finance, healthcare, and so much more. Another book on building great companies would be Good to Great, Why Some Companies Make the Leap and Others Don't by Jim Collins. Pay attention and you're going to find Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built, to be a teachable moment. While there are many books about entrepreneurship and how to succeed, Clark, an obvious admirer of Ma, lets us see Ma as the dogged pursuer who knows and shows the keys to success. Understand and address problems. Hire the best team. Make your product a market fit. Accept all feedback. Localize. And then take back the global market at a slow pace. Work with investors you want to have relationships with. And lastly, taking risks is evidently important in the book. Zero to One by Peter Thiel is another book for startups like this. Sure, the entrepreneur has heard it all before, but between the lines of Clark's story, we see in action through the strengths, beliefs, and hard work of a humbled, driven individual locked in an oppressive society whose perseverance made him a billionaire. If this book is a lesson, it's a lesson worth learning. About the author, Duncan Clark. A former investment banker at Morgan Stanley, Duncan Clark not only lived in China for over two decades, closely followed Ma's ascension from nearly the beginning. Clark speaks fluent Mandarin and manages over a hundred employees at BDA China. He founded the company in 1994 in Beijing. A former visiting scholar at the Stanford University, Clark first met Jack Ma along with other leaders in the burgeoning Chinese internet market on stage during a keynote speech. This has been a book review of Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built. We are accessory to success. Thanks for listening. We've made a lot of other book recommendations in this review. You can find links to all of those in the blog post. Don't forget to subscribe to our email newsletter. Follow us on social media. And thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next review.